without price? Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which, is, which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me here that your soul may live and that I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast love, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him run to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. And again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. And again, sent servants, uh, other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited are not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. In the name of Jesus. Isaiah the Old Testament, which might have some comparisons to the Gospel, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 9. Today, you receive an invitation like no other. The Lord comes to you today and offers you food that you cannot buy and water that costs you nothing. He invites you to come and partake of the gifts that have no end. He desires to satisfy you with his compassion, which is shown by the labor of his love. He wants you to be satisfied with nothing else, 
but words that come from his mouth, food that is offered by his hands, and water that is continually outpoured in order to satisfy your thirst. He thrives to uphold his promise of forgiveness by absolving your sins and taking you out of a world that continues to cause you heartache and pain. Come, he says in Isaiah, incline your ear, come to me, hear that your soul may be saved. Through the compassion of our Lord, he invites you to come to his church to receive life, life with no end. He begs that you continue to hold to those things which are good and to labor after those things which give life. This is an invitation like no other because this invitation comes from the Lord of hosts and the Lord of hosts wants nothing more than to satisfy you with gifts and to fill his banquet with all those who believe. An invitation like no other. And yet, how do we see the world respond? Parking lots are left empty. Pews aren't being filled and somehow our billfolds have nothing. There are many in the world who don't see the church in the same light as those in the past. Church certainly might be a convenience, but for some it certainly isn't a priority or an, even an obligation. Our churches today can't stand a chance against those activities like watching sports, playing video games, or even going fishing. Of course, that also means that some people can take church for granted. There's the assumption that church will always be here and that things will always stay the same. And yet, after 2020, things haven't stayed the same since, have they? Many people watch church from the luxury of their own homes. They refuse or skip out on communion and fellowship with one another. Other churches in the country stay locked down, refusing to let people come together and partake in the good gifts that God gives. Here in Isaiah, this prophet was preparing Israel for what was to come. Babylon was on its way. And because of Israel's unfaithfulness, God was prepared to give them into the hands of the Babylonians. Israel had taken their reputation with God for granted. And they had become a wicked people who had lost their identity in the false gods that were surrounding them. God wasn't going to let them continue in their unfaithfulness and in turn ruin their relationship with him in his love. Therefore, God had to remind them why he was there and what he was prepared to do for them and for mankind. <coughs> so how do you respond to the invitation of God's love and compassion? How do you respond to the invitation that God gives you today? It's a hard question. Sometimes the world gets in the way, doesn't it? Broken water pipe, a hospital visit for friends or loved ones, just a bad day, a migraine, depression, anxiety, doubt, despair, you name it. The devil would love nothing more than to put everything in your way to keep you from coming to church. And he would do whatever he wants to try to turn you away from God forever. The devil likes to use the tribulations of the world as an excuse to drag you out of the church and to keep you away from God 
rejecting every good gift that God continues and wants and desires to give. Yet, Isaiah still speaks these words of warnings to the people of Israel. Words of warning that come to our ears in this unfamiliar territory for some. A warning that actually leads us back to God's grace. Hear what Isaiah has to say. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. In the midst of Babylon, in the midst of Isaiah's words of exhortation to the people of Israel, Isaiah continues to remind them that God has not abandoned them, that God has not forsaken them. In fact, Isaiah himself is living proof that God is still with them. God has not yet forsaken them. And his love comes from the words that Isaiah reveals to the people of Israel. The compassion that our Lord has for the people comes from what Isaiah is saying. And the same is true with you today. In the midst of so many changes, either in your life or even with our church, even while you sit at this chapel waiting for our sanctuary to be repaired, God has not forsaken you. God is still near. He is here with you today. In His Word, in the words that I preach, and in the sacraments that we will soon partake of. God is near, and He desires to give you life, food that will never perish, and treasure that has no end. God's desire is for you, and His labor for you is shown by His love that is revealed through Jesus Christ. For Christ is the living proof that God will never abandon nor forsake his children. Christ is the living proof that your sins are forgiven and that you are free from those things that continue to try to sway you away from God and his good gifts. Once again, you are invited today to a feast that has no end. Rejoice and be glad. For God is still here. Rejoice and be glad. For God's compassion continues to overwhelm you by the inviting words of God's grace and mercy for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm not sure. Do we have an offering? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's continue with our offer.
Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For compassion, that the righteous and holy one of Israel would not deal with us according to our sins, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the kingdom of God, that he would preserve the invitation of his saving gospel among us and lead many into the eternal wedding feast, that he would protect and vindicate his servants who preach the word and guard their families from those who oppose their ministry in life, and that God would open their ears to listen diligently to his, love, his living and life-giving word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the will of God be done among us. For our homes, for the generation after generation, may walk not as unwise but wise, redeeming the, uh, the, the evils of their hearts, uh, looking for the redemption of the evil that comes from their hearts in Christ's return. And for all Christian citizens of our nation, that they may, uh, that in this foolish world they would be filled with the Holy Spirit to submit to their authorities out of reverence for Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For bread that satisfies the body and the soul, that God would continue to pro uh, provide for every need of our body that he would continue to look over those who are sick and homebound among us, those who we name in our hearts and bring before your altar. For Mary, Delane, for Addison, for Todd, for Virginia, for Christopher, for Vera, for Angela, for Priscilla, for Marie, for Mary Jo, for Myrtle, for Elise, for Cheryl, Jackie, for Karen, for Glenda, for Jack, for Jerry, for Norma, for Al, for Sophia, for Jim, for Pastor Coons, for Pat, for Dwayne, for Katie, for Dawn, for Casey, for Edwin, for Jason, for Jim, for Rachel, for Mary, for Linda, for Colby, for Hannah, for Amber, for Laura, for Jack, for uh, Mikhail, and for Hannah. And we also pray for Eric. That God would continue to watch over these who need his uh, grace, for these who need his healing hand, that he would continue to provide for them all that they need in Christ's name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We offer special prayers for Natalie Lamar, uh, Lamarin, a friend of a uh, friend of Barbie Humes, who is looking to see her mom, who is in ICU. We ask, Lord, that you continue to watch over her in this time of need. Keep her mom safe and give them, uh, uh, reunite them, if it be your will, according to your word. Uh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all those with birthdays and anniversaries among us. Those, uh, Paul, Paul Jones, Becky O'Neill, uh, Clay Hooker, Cheyenne Jones, Kathleen Kruger, um, Ansley Brooks, Hunter Clemens, uh, Lana DeVille, Grace Kruger, and River Robbins. We also pray for the anniversaries among us, for Tammy and Scott W., for Brenda and John Humphreys. We ask, Lord, that as you continue to be with these people in the years uh, past, you continue to watch over them and send to them on your Son, Jesus Christ, in the years to come, that they may find comfort in your word and in your invitation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Spare us from all temptations, Lord, and deliver us from evil. In true repentance, lead us to forsake our wicked ways and unrighteous thoughts and return to you for abundant pardon, seeking you while we may be while you may be found, that when Christ returns in his glory, we may not be cast into the outer darkness, but welcomed into his everlasting wedding hall by grace. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Grant us your spirit, gracious Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words by which Christ uh, gives to us his body and his blood for our forgiveness. By your, of your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which, may, which he manifested to us when, by pouring out his precious blood, he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and his blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship uh, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.